Have you ever been working on a development system or trying to test uh, sending emails and finding yourself uh, having to change code to send emails to yourself um, or sending emails to customers by accident? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a product called MailHog. Its only purpose is to essentially hog your mail. So it's an SMTP server and you send email to it and it does not send it to the recipient. It just holds it on so you can have a look at how your email was sent. So let's dive in, have a look at how to install it and what it looks like. So in order to install MailHog, you can just use Docker. So you can run a, a Docker run MailHog command as I'm showing you on the screen now. And that will just go and pull the latest MailHog image from the Docker Hub and run it as a container for you. It takes only a few moments to run. And then the last thing you need to do is expose some ports. So as we can see now, it's just pulling down the images that make up the, the container. And then once that's done, as we did a Docker run, it will just run the service. And there we have it. So the service has been installed. You can see here that it's running on port 1025 and 8025. 1025 is the SMTP port and 8025 is the web application that you can go and have a look at the emails that have been sent. So let's have a look in Portainer. So Portainer, I've got a previous video about this, is a nice user interface to show you your containers that are running. And we can see here that we've got MailHog running. Um, however, there are no published ports. In my Docker run command, I didn't publish any ports. And we can see that here. We just did a Docker run, but we didn't expose any ports. Now we could just cancel the Docker run and run it with you know the correct ports exposed. But what we're going to do is go into Portainer and remake the container using some published ports. So what we're gonna do is just go into the, the container itself and then we're going to duplicate edit the container. We can't actually edit a running container. So you can see here, we've got published all exposed network ports to random host ports. Now this is really good. And if you just tick this, you don't have to worry about what ports um, you know, are already exposed and try and map them yourself. Just tick that. If it doesn't matter what ports you need to use, just tick that and then hit deployment in progress. Hit deployed. and then it will go through and run that deployment for you. And there we have it. So as we went through, we also changed the name of our container to MailHog, but you can see in the published ports, we've got 49175 and 49176 as our exposed ports. So 49175 is going to be our SMTP port and 49176 is gonna be our web interface. So let's go over now to the web interface and have a look at that. And here it is. So it's a very, very simple interface. It shows connected on the left hand side and there's nothing because we haven't sent any emails. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a, a test Jenkins instance without email set up. I'm just gonna go over to that and configure email and then we can do some test sending of email and actually see that, em, em, that email arrive uh, in MailHawk. So in the Jenkins configure, I can put in the internal IP address of the SMTP server and then if I hit on advanced, there's some ports in there for SMTB ports. So I can put in the correct port of 49176. I can hit on save and then we've got a test configuration by sending a test email. So I can put an email address in there and so hello at john.com. I'm not even sure if that is an email address that exists. We can see there the email was sent successfully and I can do a hello at bbc.co.uk as well and do a test configuration on that. And then back into MailHog, what we should see is two emails there waiting for us. I really hope you found that video of MailHog useful. Uh, please drop a comment um, underneath this video uh, telling me how you use MailHog and uh, how it saved you, um, you know, when, when deploying development apps and things like that. Um, and I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch these videos. Uh, if you like the video, please feel free to subscribe 
um, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.